Today's build is going to be a real challenge as we'll attempt a one tile city challenge here in Cities Challenge 2. I did one of these in Cities 1 and it was a ton of fun, but Cities 2 tiles are just a lot smaller than in Cities 1. Uh, so it's going to be really restrictive trying to work with that space and we're going to try and go for a more aesthetic, creative look than trying to reach like a certain population figure or a milestone. Anyways, we got to pick a map. I'm grabbing this one from PDX Mods, wonderful looking map, which should be a lot of fun to work with. I'm going to switch the theme to European for once, and we're going to keep Unlock All selected for maximum creative freedom. And then I'll need a creative name, some, yeah, Little Isle, that's going to do. Let's go. Oh, and if you enjoy my content, I would really appreciate if you would like this video. Thank you. And we are greeted with this map, which is absolutely beautiful right out the gate. So that's a really good start. We are going to do a few things to beautify the whole thing, though. The first thing is going to be our photo mode settings. So using the preserve photo mode mod, we can make the colors a little more interesting to look at. If we jump into photo mode. We're going to scroll down and enable some bloom. We're not going to set the slider to anything, but because just by enabling it, the colors are a little more contrasty and strong, especially in the distance. We jump into color, we're going to enable a bit of contrast as well. And then we jump into weather, we're going to scroll down to the fog setting. And as we enable a maximum height, you'll see that the map is just overall a lot less foggy. And then if we uh, remove photo mode, these settings are preserved by using this mod. Now with some beautiful colors in place, we have to designate our one tile. Uh, because the starting area here is unfortunately way too big for our challenge. In fact, it represents about four tiles, so that's obviously not gonna work. What we're gonna do instead is pick one of these tiles and then do a bit of terraforming just to really isolate what we're working with. So I'm thinking if we grab maybe this tile or this tile right here, then that's going to be just what we want. So I think we're going to grab this tile here uh, and then we're going to have to isolate it. So we're going to jump into some terraforming, going to control A to enable anarchy with the anarchy mod. Then I'm just going to right click on this level here and then we're just going to make sure that this is turned into an island. And I'm not really worried about maximizing the space of our one tile completely because that would leave us with just like a complete square, which is not going to look all that interesting. Uh, so I'm actually OK with having, you know, a less optimal setup, because as I said in the very beginning, uh, we're doing this to try and achieve some interesting and fun aesthetics more so than trying to, you know, reach a certain milestone or a certain population figure. Anyways, let's see if this is deep enough for us to actually get some water flowing in there. So we're going to hit tab to enable the developer menu, go into simulation, go down to water, and then we're going to set the water sim speed to max. All right, so we've got ourselves an island now, and I've just went ahead and kind of separated some of these other islands as well. Because while we probably can't create like a fully realistic narrative for why this island was chosen to be developed, we can at least do some changes to the surrounding landscape to make that a little less desirable for development. Which is why I am going to turn uh, much of this peninsula here into like a, a low swampland type of deal. So I'm going to lower the elevation quite a bit and then we're going to have a ton of like small rivers and small bodies of water here. Uh, just so that in isolation at least when we look at our isle it's a little obvious why you would choose to actually build something there and not just on this mainland peninsula here. That's the idea at least but yeah. Uh, given my track record I don't know how it's going to turn out. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, so to my surprise, this has turned out pretty all right, I think. Uh, I'm gonna spam a bunch of bushes now to really sell that look. So we're just gonna pick a wide selection of different bushes here. Use the brush with some anarchy, of course. Maybe choose some small brush, uh, some small sizes of bushes as well. And then we're just gonna go ham. 
behind this is the results, which I am pretty, pretty happy about. We might make uh, this a little more dramatic later on, but I think for now we need to move on because we're far away from having a city just yet. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we have to connect to the main highway system that's going to feed traffic and citizens into our one tiled city. Uh, so I want to try and go ahead and grab maybe this uh, three lane highway here. We're going to slightly elevate it and I have to use, yeah, I have to use Anarchy to, uh, to build this. Uh, I, hope, I hope you'll forgive me uh, for, for that because... I mean, we, we need to get people out here and I don't think we can fit like a ferry terminal at all, really. Uh, but we can maybe create like an interesting snaky road that kind of cuts through this cool looking landscape. Goes by the lake here and then we just need to connect up. And we'll just do... Uh, a very, very simple connection here. We might just upgrade a segment or two of the adjacent roads. Maybe add a roundabout to make it look a little more interesting. And that's about it. And now that we've got our snaky entrance road in place, I've just realized something uh, a bit critical. Uh, we don't have the ability to import electricity from neighboring towns on this map so we'll have to generate it uh, on our own and of course the obvious issue is that we have so little space available to us that if we try to do it within the actual tile then it's just gonna be odd i mean the least invasive manure would be the wind turbines but even they are gonna look really wonky in here uh, so i think i'm gonna make an executive decision i hope you guys will forgive me uh, and create an uh, offshore wind farm all the way out here. So we're just going to have these in a couple of rows. I don't know if this is how offshore wind farms look, but uh, yeah. Then we'll get some underwater power cables going. And I'm going to connect that to the highway system and upgrade the highway system uh, to have some street lighting. Because that should enable me to carry all this sweet juicy electricity into town so let's see whoop, 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 whoop. and connect to the very vanilla named uh vermont highway and just upgrade the whole thing and there we go we've got some power generation of our own now although we are cheating quite a bit it does look pretty cool though with a an offshore wind farm out here so now that my embarrassing lack of preparation is on full display uh, due to the electricity situation, I'm very happy to announce that we've got uh, plenty of groundwater on this map, <laughs> which is perfect. So I'm kind of safe by the bell here uh, because I don't want to pump up uh, seawater. This is a very expensive process and very few countries around the planet actually rely on this for the majority of their freshwater needs. Uh, so we are going to utilize the ground water pumping station uh, but i'm not going to place uh, the pumping station or the uh, treatment facility plant whatever it's called just yet because i'm going to place those in our uh, industrial area uh, and to get that far we need an actual road layout planning the road layout is really going to be the first real challenge of this build so i think i'm just going to start with a pretty basic ring road and then we're going to have a mixture of different grids and some curvy bits as well. I don't want to go too gridded because that can kind of make the whole thing feel a little less interesting. Uh, but I don't want too many odd angles and curves either because that's going to uh, limit the amount of space we have for development, especially some of the service buildings that have quite big lot sizes. And it's also just going to take a lot more time to actually get uh, good looking. So we're gonna start with the ring road and then we're gonna work onwards from there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the very basic two lane road and build a few of the initial segments and then stitch them together. Uh, we've got sort of a coastline here um, but the elevation changes are very minor so I think we're gonna have a beach of some sort uh, potentially up here. So I might leave just a bit more space up here so we could actually Kinda, we could kind of start with this area to designate our beach because it's going to be 
annoying to retrofit that later as we'll have to delete a bunch of stuff. So if we just build a segment like this, then we've kind of made this area safe for development, at least theoretically. And then let's just create a few additional segments without anarchy, because I really don't need that. And let's see. And you can see that the elevation changes are really not all that bad on this map. Uh, so that's definitely something that is working in our favor. And then I think we're going to bring a bridge across here. I'm just quickly gonna remove all the trees and bushes. I know I did technically plant these not very long ago, but yeah, let's just get this cleaned up so that we know what we're working with. Then we're gonna build the main uh, avenue, some fancy avenue with a fancy name that kind of cuts through the middle, the center here of the small island. So what I would like to do is grab the one lane, one way roads, go into parallel mode, Go to the uh, shortest distance between uh, that we can. And then I'll just create the first straight segment to kind of move down here, maybe. Something like this. And then I am going to connect it up to our entrance. And I've got big plans for what we are building here, which you will see in just a moment. But for now... We're just gonna build a simple layout, get it connected here. And then what I wanna do is create like a real cool super node in here. So uh, the prime central intersection of the city. And to do this, I will need a roundabout to create our super node. So I'm going to, let's see, can I, I can remove these segments and this segment here. And then I'll just align this at the very center of these two roads. And this is going to make sense in just a second. If you haven't created a super node before, I'm going to create a roundabout. And then I'm going to connect up our one way roads. Grab it from here and just bring it all the way through. Yeah, that's uh, right. Okay, never mind. Guess I'll just need a node here. Wow, this is this is a bit funky. But this should work. Bring that through. There we go. If I delete this, this is gonna be a single node. As I grab move it, you can see it's a single node. So that's really, really cool because it's gonna make it very easy for us to create a really nice looking intersection. So I'll just bring these avenues straight through. Yoink and yoink. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an additional node here because we're going to upgrade to five lane asymmetrical like this. And I'm going to fix these nodes in just a second. Actually, let's start with that. If we grab move it uh, and hold down alt so we enter manipulation mode, something we can do is just drag this out. And as you guys can see, the transition node now from the four lane avenue to this five lane asymmetrical is much, much smoother. It looks a lot better than this, at least. Uh, so this is a really powerful feature. Oh, and one more additional powerful feature of, of Moovit. And it just makes it look much, much better. What we can also do, of course, is we can make the actual interchange we've got here or the intersection much smoother by dragging these something like this maybe just a, a tad more something like this is probably fine doesn't need to be fully symmetrical um what i want to do now is upgrade some of these to have additional lanes so we'll just Add in a few nodes, then I'm gonna move in and upgrade these to the free lane version. And as we delete these, 
we'll see a pretty good even split into the three lane version. Now, technically, we can, of course, just make this a tiny bit smoother as well. Uh, it's not as necessary as this transition here because it's the transition is actually uh, it's all right looking right out the gate, I think. So it's not really that important. And here where we've got a curve, I got to be careful not to make it wonky. So I think I actually I better just leave that unchanged like that. But uh, this is basically the central intersection of the town. And we're just going to move in and add some grass on the inside here because we don't want I don't want any parking on the inside here. It's going to be like a path where you can walk, have some trees and whatnot. Uh, down here, I'm probably going to upgrade this to a free lane segment, although I want a node placed a little differently. So we'll upgrade this, delete this, then we'll add additional nodes to this road and this road here. So we can upgrade them to free lane segments like so and just as before if we grab move it and move into manipulation mode we can make that transition here much nicer looking uh, we can do the same over here but we gotta be careful because we've got a curve coming up and then for this we can just overall try and make the intersection a little bigger just like that single lane in either direction is probably a little underwhelming for the uh, like main avenue of the city even though it is a small city uh, so i'll upgrade it to two lanes instead because taking a look at this is a little more fitting and then i'm just gonna manipulate these notes of course so that things look sweet And I'm just quickly going to fix the connection down here before we move on to the remaining road layout. So to kick off the remaining road layout that's going to complete the aisle, we'll need two additional connections here on the main avenue. Uh, one intersection here and one intersection about here. Uh, so I might as well just get that fixed up because, um, you know, if I just grab a road here and drag that through, you'll see that we don't really have a super node here. And, you know, it's not going to be that important because I don't know how much traffic we'll have, but it is just going to look a little better if I ensure that we have super nodes both places. Uh, so I am going to just take the time to go ahead and do that, but... With a bit of editing, you guys won't have to get too bored. Let's get the remaining networks in place so that we can actually start placing down some buildings. We'll branch out here and then move down to the beach and probably just cut straight through this area here so that we can we can connect. Let's see, we've got uh, some fun a funky node here if we don't take care. Get this connection going. Yoink. And over here we're probably gonna move out. And this is gonna mess with our big boy node here, but that's uh, that's certainly fixable. So for now, we're just gonna focus on actually getting these roads in place, and then we'll do the cleanup afterwards. And <laughs> actually, we're just we're gonna clean this up right now because that looks like a complete mess. There we go. Maybe we'll just cut through here and connect up to the coastline and just placing the main roads for now then we're gonna jump over to the alley because rest assured we're gonna uh, use some of the alley buildings uh ugh, alley roads as well 
jazz to mix it up. So I think this, for instance, might be one such occasion where we're gonna use an alley road instead. Might even add an additional one. We could connect up to the main avenue and just uh, remove the cross crosswalks, uh, just like that. And we're not gonna go straight through, but just as a connection in this direction. And we can do the very same thing over here and just get the crosswalks at least, at least these out of place. And then I guess we can keep this one. And we'll do an additional alley down here. Hopefully without breaking some of our notes. So I think we're just gonna move in and then just add a little twist to the area. There you go. We're gonna remove this stop. Guess we can actually upgrade this and just have it as a main row cutting through. That's probably more appropriate. And this is gonna be close to, I think we're gonna have our industry up by this corner here. And we're not gonna have a ton of industry in uh, the city because we just, we don't have the space for it quite simply, uh, but we are gonna have some. So here we can connect up main road as well. Maybe just get a small roundabout in place. And things are starting to take shape. And of course, these roads aren't necessarily final. We can just uh, change them as we wish, but I just want to get the full layout or an idea of the full layout at the very least uh, completed because it's just going to help so we don't just have like an, an empty an empty area. Let's see if uh, this thing here is solvable. Let's get going with the industrial area since that is where we we'll need to place our wastewater treatment plant as well as our groundwater pumping stations and maybe just a mix of some warehouses and some office lots to make it a little industrial looking without like being a massive polluter because that's really not gonna work uh, given the scale of the map. Uh, there's uh, also an issue with the wind direction here, uh, so you know, ideally I'd move it down here or down here, but that's I've got other plans for these areas. So I'm gonna go light on the actual industry part of our industrial area, um, because we don't really have to adhere as much to the demands of the city. But I'm going to change the road layout ever so slightly uh, for this area here. Uh, so I'm going to create a bit of a key wall, basically. So fortunately, much of this is at pretty much the same elevation, uh, which is uh, certainly helpful. And I guess I'm not sure I would actually be able to create this road without anarchy because I am, I mean, I'm basically on the edge here, but I mean, I don't really think I am extending beyond the one tile. So I think I'm in the clear. Anyways, what I am creating is just a bit of a different uh, grid layout for the industrial area. Uh, let's see, I don't want elevation here. And I'm just gonna try and map out something relatively simple and then we'll actually delete this road here. And we'll do, yeah, I didn't really think that through, did I? <laughs> I'll add that down here. And then we've got this area here where we can then turn this side of the road into a key and make it look sort of like a, a port like a harbor i mean not really but just a bit maybe it's just to get a bit of variety and get like a, an area that just looks a bit different because i suspect much of the coastline will look uh, relatively uh simple and i guess if we were to make it even cooler we would actually have like a small dock where uh, certain types of ships might be able to actually venture into so if we delete this and move the key wall in here instead we'll sort of get that look of course i am <laughs> removing playable area but um 
I think it's worth it just to get a bit more of an interesting layout for the overall island and then we'll just let this out a bit and let the water fill in and hopefully it's gonna look pretty good. Let's see if we can even fit in our water stuff. The groundwater pumping station will fit in rather nicely in any of these locations. So I'll just place it here. I'm a little more worried about, yeah, yeah. The wastewater treatment plant is a bit of a chunky boy. So that's going to need a bit of a different strategy as far as placing goes. Uh, so I might just remove these roads here to make room for it. And if I enable anarchy, it doesn't really seem like there is anything at on the far corner there. Uh, like any props or anything. So we'll just do some like a manual alignment and have anarchy enabled so that we can really squeeze it close to the edge of the docks here. Something like this. It's a pretty bulky asset given the size of the tile, but I think it's necessary. I don't want poop water everywhere. Uh, we'll of course need to just grab the road here and just get that fixed up. And I think I'm just going to do a straight connection for starters. I'm going to try and add in a few more services before we fill out the small industrial area with some warehouse assets. And the elementary school is really going to be the biggest problem quite literally, because the asset is just massive, not the actual asset, but the uh, like surfaces and the parking lots that are kind of shipped with it. Uh, so I'm hopeful that maybe we can, maybe we can place it over here or somewhere. Uh, do, 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 do. Maybe alongside Daffodil Street here, and then we'll just remove Autumn Lane. Yank. And I'll just get that placed. Uh, and I'm trying to see if there's any crazy elevation going on, but that doesn't seem to be the case. With the school placed, uh, fire and rescue is next, and probably gonna place the firehouse relatively close to the industrial area, as I think industrial assets has the highest like chance of bursting into flames randomly. <laughs> I don't know, but I got a there's we got a hunch that that's the case. Uh, so in in this case with the firehouse, uh, I think I'm just gonna manually place it because then I can kind of uh, move it right in the center of this area here and get a look like this. Uh, we've got a police station, which is also quite a chunky asset once again due to the uh, parking lots that are kind of connected to it, and I'm thinking we're gonna place this in a different part of town and as I place this as I place all of these services we're really st starting to see where the challenge in this is because the service buildings are just massive and the tile is very very small so yeah I don't want to place it too centrally because we're gonna have some pretty build-up environment in here but it's almost like I don't really... I mean, I've got some space here, but... Is that really what I... Could place it... Ugh. I'm just gonna place it here, and then... Then maybe we'll have some buildings here alongside the avenue that kind of creeps into, into this lot. Kind of overlaps a bit. I think that'd be fine. All right, what more do you actually need? Uh, medical clinic as well. This one is a little smaller, a little easier to handle. So we've got a bit more uh, flexibility in terms of where to actually place it. And once again, I want to kind of steer clear of this area here as it's going to be uh, the most built up. So maybe we'll just move out here do, 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 alongside king street and we'll once again just do some manual alignment because i wouldn't be able to place the asset here if i didn't have anarchy enabled which is kind of silly because it, i mean it's a it's like a a hitch or a bush that's kind of poking through but that's it Yunk. next up is placing down the crematorium and i think this is going to double act as a bit of a park as well because it's actually a pretty a uh, nice looking building uh, so somewhere where we've got some space for it and which is uh, pretty centrally located 
probably around this block here so that we've got a bit of an open space among some of the more dense areas that we'll have surrounding this and just to finish up our services i'll do any upgrades i can do that just visually makes the building look a little denser with less open unused space so for the school here for instance adding the extension wing is probably what i want to do and we've got a garage extension for the, uh, our fire station here uh, moving on to the medical clinic yes we'll get some extra ambulance depots added um the crematorium hmm probably not gonna do anything because i like the symmetry of it and it's it's gonna be a, this block is just a park so it's meant to be low density and provide a bit of space and air uh let's see we've got a garage extension for the police station as well and i think that pretty much covers it but that kind of helps uh i might redo the school because it's it's just a massive asset now for the alley, but we'll see. Next up, we're gonna add some of the most defining assets to the build. So it's primarily gonna be high rises we're gonna start with uh, because they take up the most space and they are going to visually dominate um, the city, at least from a distance and probably uh, as an everyday citizen on the uh, underground as well. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a good start before we add too much clutter and medium density we'll get some high density offices and i'm gonna start with level fives they usually look the nicest and just try and squeeze in a few of these towers and it's important for me that we don't go for like super tall towers this one might even be uh, too tall for my liking where this one is probably around the, the limits because I, I think that we can very easily just add something that's a bit too tall and end up really dwarfing the footprint of the aisle. I hope that makes sense. It's uh, yeah, a weird explanation, but it is me after all. A anyways, let's get in a, a few of these added. I'll have to make room for some high density residential as well, so I can't fill out anything or everything, sorry. Uh, so we're just gonna take it slow. And this one is probably bad because the actual lot size is way too big for the building but i'm hopeful that we can find it in a different configuration where it's a lot smaller yeah it's pretty much this one i think and i don't want to add it on a corner here but we could add it to this corner here yank then we've got this one where I'll try to fit it into a bit of a more awkward space due to it being a very small asset. We've got kind of a bend going on here we could use. This one has a very slim uh, profile with a very small footprint. Uh, so I think it's something that we would probably see in a city like this. Uh, but we'll, I think we'll add it to maybe this corner here. I kind of want to spread out the high rises so that I don't have too much of a central cluster. And before placing any more high rises, I should probably check if there are some signature buildings that we'd like to use. Because they usually have a bigger footprint than our regular assets. Um, and they're just a joy to place because they generally also look a little nicer than regular assets. Uh, so maybe getting this big bad boy in place there and then moving over to commercial, seeing if there's something here that makes sense to place. And since so much is going to be high density for our town, uh, then why not get this placed as well? Uh, if we can find an appropriate spot for it, of course. Maybe here on this corner here, I can just align it so that it still has road access. There you go. We're gonna squeeze in the old factory condos in this block here. And then I think the US theme has these ones, the Gatehouse Residences, which is a really nice building. It's got a bit of an odd color, uh, but other than that, it's very, very nice looking. Uh, so maybe if we angle it like this on this block here, then it's uh, quite a stunning building you see as you approach the city from the bridge. 
So to mix things up a bit, I'm going to switch to placing a bunch of European medium density buildings because that is the overall theme we're going for and that's the type of assets that are going to make up the bulk of the city. And I'm apparently pretty lucky because right before I was about to record this segment, an update was published to the find it mod, which is going to make this a lot easier because uh, new filters have actually been added, uh, allowing me to filter for zoning size, but also the zoning type. And interestingly, these are divided into the actual densities of the buildings. So if we pick medium buildings and I move up here and just search for EU, then that is going to filter the medium density residential, uh, but leaving the row houses out, which I don't want right now in my search. Uh, and of course, all the mixed use as well. And then I find that if I change the view style to the list view, so that I have this continuous list, then it's actually pretty easy to sort through and kind of grab what I at least think I need, especially if we start defining the zoning size. Okay, so with this in place, here's my plan. In the center of the city, which I guess we can kind of vaguely describe as being within the, the boundaries of this road network here, I'm going to pretty much solely only use the older looking European assets. And then as we move a bit further away from the center, there's going to be a greater likelihood that I'll use some of the not as old looking assets. And what I mean by that is generally there's a couple of different time frames at play here for the European assets. So if we grab this uh, mixed level one, four by four, it's got sort of uh, like 60s or 70s wipe. Uh, at least if you ask me, but as we kind of increase the levels, it's almost as if the architecture starts feeling a little more old. Uh, so this block here could go for a pre-war, and by that of, I of course mean the Second World War uh, building, while I don't really think uh, this building here could go for that. So that's basically what I mean with preferentially using older buildings in here, and then as we move out, we're going to uh, be a little less strict about it.
Oh man, that was exhausting. <laughs> We're not even done. Oh, it does take a long time to manually place the buildings, but it would have looked drastically different if we were to zone this. So I think it's all it's all worth it. Um, but uh, I think it's time we kind of mix it up and do something a little else because these areas that are still empty are going to look a little different. We're going to have a bit of an industrial cluster down here, as we discussed earlier. Uh, and then I think I'm going to try and transition into some more row housing down here. I did start implementing a bit of row housing here and there, added this very small lane in here. And I really think it does add just a bit of extra character to an otherwise pretty dense uh, cityscape. But I think what we're going to do now is do a bit of landscaping, a bit of detailing. I'm going to designate this as a park with some greenery, uh, trees and bushes and some paths. And then I think instead of turning this into a beach, uh, which is going to look a little odd with the texture clipping that we would have to, um, to get into, uh, then I think I'm going to just make it like a, you know, a waterfront promenade with some food stalls, some tables and uh, lots of detailing, basically some some nice paths for you to to take a walk. Uh, so no, no beach stuff, but lots of nice parks and plazas. So before I get going with the park, I've just created a district. We can just call this Isle uh, just to track the you know, development of the city because I've started the simulation now and there's more than 4,000 households. So we're gonna get quite a beefy population, I think, when all this, uh, when all this said and done, but we're probably gonna need some more jobs because it seems that there are 600 job offerings currently. We'll see how this uh, changes as more and more companies move in, but we may have to, yeah, get some more jobs going. Anyways, for the park, um, this is going to be primarily a green park, but it's going to have two types of, of surfaces, basically. Uh, a tiled surface uh, where I might have, you know, some food stalls and stuff, and then some manicured grass where we'll have some flowers and bushes and trees and whatnot. So to create a nice curvy design, I'm going to use the pavement path to act as like a guideline for these um, the surfaces because if I first I'm gonna designate where I want the tile surface to be so for instance let's say I wanted to have like a swoopy design that kind of moves like this yank and then I want the manicured grass to be out here so not quite all the way down to the to the bay and the water and also in a smooth configuration i'll just delete this but maybe something like this so we'll have the tiled surface in here and then we'll have the manicured grass here and the reason I place these paths is that it makes it a lot easier if I am to grab one of the tile surfaces. Just need to see which one I need to use. Is it? It's the uh, first one. This one. Um, when I have the paths in place, it's going to snap to it when I create the tile surface. So it just obviously makes the whole thing a lot easier. And I think we're going to delete the path here and replace that with uh, an invisible path, maybe. We'll see. I'm just going to start creating the tile surface, of course. There you go. And that should hook this curve refrated with the pavement path um, pretty well. Then for grass, the O2 surface is the uh, well manicured uh, version of the grass. So we're just going to get that in place as well. And just going to move it real close so that it aligns perfectly with the tiles we have. And now we should be able to remove the pavement, the paths here, Yank. and this one as well. And we get this swoopy curvy design. Uh, and then we can add some props and a bit of detail to it, add some hang around markers as well as some invisible paths. Uh, so I think for starters, I'm just going to go and grab like a birch maybe, uh, set it to elderly so that it's the biggest size. 
and then just place a few alongside the edge between the tiles and the well manicured grass here something like this and then for up here we are gonna grab like a food stall or something like that so i'm thinking we move into props and we search for food and i select this hide branding assets because you see just how many like signs and stuff we've got then that filters that away which is very cool and then we got these small food carts you know grab some popcorn uh some i don't know anything really <laughs> just gonna create these maybe have a few more dedicated stalls down here small like uh, small market almost and then if we move in here for the other props and we select table let's see can we grab a table set maybe i think that's what it's called a table set yeah and just grab a set we can place in here and then we could do a different type of set over here just to create a bit of variety something like this maybe I uh, don't want to go too heavy on the details, so we'll start here at least. Uh, I want to get some of the paths in place, I think. So we'll move into this menu, and there's the invisible pedestrian path. But I think first I'm going to designate a park area. An area for your citizens to enjoy nature and greenery. There's going to be a list of all marks down in the description, so don't worry about it. Uh, but let's just designate, uh, we can pretty much follow the outline here of the tiled area. And wrap that up and then move in and create some invisible pedestrian paths. So I'm going to disable snapping and just bring a path all the way down here. And it's going to split into multiple paths, of course. I'll create one here and then we'll have a path moving around the perimeter of the tiles. Something like this. And branch off, move in this direction. And we've already got people walking here. Which is really, really nice. People taking their dog for a walk. And then for the detailing of this bay here, uh, what I'm going to do is grab some bushes and just kind of place them at random sizes uh, alongside the edge of the manicured grass here to try and kind of create like a natural boundary of sorts for, for where the well manicured area of this park turns into the more uh, wild uh, bay where we're gonna have some rocks and some boulders and just a ton of bushes growing at random. And I wonder if I can actually, uh, maybe I'm, maybe I can utilize the brush for doing this out here, and then I can remove some of the bushes that are too far into the water. Something like this, and then we're gonna need some trees, of course. Oh, look at these oaks. The color of these. Beautiful. And as we've crossed the 1000 population mark, 1200 in fact, I'm going to grab this design and sort of do something similar here alongside the waterfront. So just like before, we're going to grab the pavement path at first. Uh, disable any snapping. And then just start mapping out the path so that we can add in our tile set. And in this case, I'm also going to map out some paths that go real close to the water here. And then I'm hopeful I can do something interesting with the surfaces so that we can get a custom path here. So we'll have uh, surface tiles here, where you have hang around areas like an open plaza, food stalls and whatnot. 
then there is some wild nature in here and then uh, we've got a surface tile path here as well which where we use an invisible path to make it functional uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try and we'll see if it's if it works out just a bit of a spontaneous idea i had Right, looks pretty funky. <laughs> Prop use is gonna be uh, much the same as the other uh, park. We'll get a bunch of food carts going. Uh, I think especially down here, where, which is like a almost like a central square of a sort, um, we'll get a few of these placed in. A bit of everything, really, so that there's good chance of getting something nice to eat or maybe just a snack really and I'll have one of these down here one of these stalls as well and we'll add something down here as well and I wonder if we should have like a fountain at the very end here Nothing too fancy, just I say not too fancy, but I guess it needs to be relatively big actually. This one is probably the least fancy of the big fountains, so I think we might just add that in there. And it seems that we'll need to do a bit of terraforming really. I think that's that's probably pretty fitting just to make this uh, a bit elevated um, compared to the remainder of the show. All right, we need some table sets as well. And let's see. Just add some random sets. My fountain just disappeared. And I'm not quite sure why. I'll add the fancy one instead. <laughs> and we'll see if it sticks around. Not sure why it disappeared before, but oh well. Uh, let's grab the same type of birch in a big size and just add that just like we did before. Um, I kind of like that there's a, just like a system to the landscaping and detailing. So the city has kind of employed the same type of trees, the same type of tiles and whatnot uh, across these two these two separate parks. And now we need to designate some uh, some park areas, some hang around areas where we'll expect to see uh, groups of people. So I'll just add a few of these and then I'll move in and add in the invisible paths so that we can have some people actually walk around here, enjoy themselves. But I'm just creating a few of these areas first. All right, let's see. Invisible pedestrian path and we'll probably just... I'll start by mapping out the path here i think it's probably a good start then i'll make sure we've got ample connection to the sidewalks and especially these crosswalks here at intersections and we're also gonna need some paths moving in here near the food stalls i'll be adding in the manicured grass texture in between the paths here and uh, since it's gonna be contained between these tile surfaces i fortunately don't have to be so careful when creating this because they're not gonna overlap or cause any sea fighting or texture issues uh, so it should be fairly simple for me to just map this out Yep. 
So it's definitely the easiest surface work I've done in this video so far. And then the detailing of the actual shoreline is going to be much in the same um, type I've done over here. So uh, first adding all the bushes by just manually grabbing what I want. So I want, uh, let's see, I want this selection, I think, in a variety of sizes. I'll just turn this down to 10, but add in some strength and I'll have anarchy on and then I'll just clean up the bushes that go uh, too too far into the water or clips on top of the surfaces I've already placed but I find that approach a little easier than trying to manually place these uh, without anarchy and for the park at the crematorium I want to keep it really simple we'll grab some tile surface uh, the same one we've been using everywhere so far the O1 and then I'm gonna enable some snapping here so that I can get a decent 90 degree angle to kind of follow the building at least but I can see that yeah it's gonna be at a bit of an angle down here but I guess that's fine uh, we'll have some food stalls <laughs> and some tables here so there are plenty of food stalls in our little town that's uh, that's for sure and let's see uh, what I want to do then is just add in uh, just an extra little path on either side here and then we'll have the well-kept manicured grass in between so that's the grass O2 which we should be able to fairly easily just wrap around completely hopefully without overriding any textures of the crematorium and we didn't and then we'll go ahead and grab the invisible paths here just to add an extra path in here moving all the way around and then food stalls and some tables We have a bit of industrial demand which is perfect because we have been reserving this area out here for some industry stuff uh, and primarily the warehouse type and the reason i want to utilize that is that it doesn't have chimneys so i have an idea that it's a little less polluting than the other types of industry i don't actually know if that's the case but i hope that's the case at least um, so we're going to play some of this and let's see if level 5 is probably what's going to provide the most uh, amount of jobs. We'll change to a list view because I like uh, that overview of, you know, the zoning sizes so that I can try and grab what I need specifically for the available space I have. And we can stitch some of these together as well. Uh, makes these buildings look a lot more interesting at least but otherwise it's gonna be a pretty simple procedure of just adding these in and level 5 is a little restrictive in terms of not having all that many assets at our disposal so I might just make the search uh, a little wider but I think for now I am pretty much finding exactly what I need, which is perfect. And I'm thinking of adding like a path and kind of framing this area off ever so slightly because I don't want it to be any bigger than than the blocks we have currently. Uh, so if we were to move in here and grab our tile surface, once again, I ask for your support, Mr. Tile Surface, and just bring this through. 
all the way down here to create like a custom path and then we'll have trees on either side and hopefully that's gonna maybe we can even move this ever so slightly just move it a bit closer to the road and yeah just gonna grab my good old trusty invisible path and bring that through and then try and frame in this with some some trees and maybe even some bushes just to kind of block off the uh, manufacturing district just a bit so if i grab this bush set it to random rotation and decrease the spacing to about two meters and that is going to help kind of create that barrier i was talking about yank sweet i think that's uh that's how far we're gonna take that <laughs> this area i really don't want to spend too much time on like the industrial stuff we might just uh, expand some of these surfaces a bit and then use the bigger tool to just just grab uh, a proper two and place that yeah just uh placing a few props that's that's all for as as far as detailing goes uh, although i am going to expand these tiles as well Or maybe just keep it here and then actually go ahead and grab these uh, bushes and trees and making another line here. All right, so that is the one of the one of the better industrial areas I've seen in terms of not being, you know, not looking too bad, uh, not looking too depressing, and not having any smokestacks and i suspect a city like this however unrealistic it may be uh, would probably have a marina uh, so i'm just gonna see if i can relatively quickly create a marina so we'll upgrade this road here because then i'll remove this road and then we'll turn this into a key I think wait I have to think I have to think before I do stuff now okay so I have to flatten this terrain before I start mapping out the marina that's probably a good start I will do something like this and then we'll go ahead and grab our pavement path enable some snapping and I want some warehouses here for like boats and equipment Uh, but then I am also just going to create the... Where do you actually enter? Maybe here? Yeah, okay. So I'll just create like a quick layout here for the marina. And the reason I flatten everything and, and build it on land, so to speak, is that I can just upgrade this to bridge segments and it's a lot easier... Uh, I find it at least easier than trying to trying to build this uh, on the water. And I always create the weirdest designs um, for the boats to dock with very little resemblance of anything that looks weird. So, <laughs> so that's definitely uh, the case here as well. I can already sense that this is going to look weird. But it's gonna look all all right from afar, <laughs> so I'm I'm just gonna tell myself that that's my goal here, and then try and align it at least a bit so it doesn't get embarrassing. And yeah, that's probably it. Beautiful, beautiful marina, huh? <laughs> Guess I did actually manage to clean it up just a little bit. Uh, anyways, we're gonna turn. Do, 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 do. Uh, the outside here into a key wall instead of a bridge segment because I want to put some rocks here, some boulders so that it looks like a, a breakwater 
Uh, and it's gonna be the same for the inside of these segments here. Uh, but then, of course, all the piers will be bridge segments so that when I move in with some terraforming and lower this whole thing, uh, we get a super realistic looking marina. <laughs> uh, let's, yeah, let's just check. Uh, I'm just gonna grab this level here and then try to let, let the water in. I mean, that's, that's not too bad, right? Right? Asking nervously. <laughs> I don't think it's too bad. It's uh, it's all right. Um, let's see if we can grab a warehouse. Um, uh, yeah, some type of warehouse asset. Do, 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 do. And it obviously can't be too deep. So maybe something like this is going to fit our needs make it get it as close to the actual marina as possible you know just a place where you can like uh store some equipment or other stuff that you might actually uh you might need as part of managing the marina maybe you want to do some uh repairs to some boats or you know stuff like that that's what i what i imagine these buildings would be for and we'll just grab uh whatever surface we can so that i can uh can i f so that i uh, try and fix this surface or something like this maybe actually get that all the way over there and make sure that goes all the way to the pavement as well nice Mm, and let's see if we can get those random boulders to work the way we want to. What am I doing wrong here in terms of the searching? Let's just try dev mode instead then. Wait. And then I'll see if I can create a brick water. It's going to be a bit awkward because the water level is very it's very shallow on this map so i don't know how this is actually gonna look but i just want to add a bit of details to uh, to this out up here it looks all right <laughs> i think that's that's fitting it looks all right All right, it's time we fill out the last remaining blocks of the of the city. And for some of these, I'm going to be utilizing uh, a lot of row houses and then I'll be adding in some medium density and some of the corners and just uh, at some places to kind of kind of break it up a bit.
Oh man, this city has required so much effort, but I think I think we're actually done. I've pretty much filled out everything now and I mean, I could spend hours doing more detailing, but this video is already going to be way too long as is and I am so fearful of the editing process I have to begin after this final recording. Uh, so I think it's 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 best to call it now. Although we are going to take a little tour of the city and look at some statistics before we wrap it up all together. Uh, so down here in this corner I went for like a modern uh, high-rise residential development and maybe like a, I guess this looks like a modern shopping center as well. Uh, pretty mixed, mixed area here with a lot of different stuff going on. As we move over to this corner we've of course got our tiny tiny ports, our uh, water pumping and sewage treatment facilities as well as a small warehouse district that I've tried to kind of kind of separate from the remainder of the of the city uh, as far as the housing units go um, we've got some of these 60s and 70s buildings kind of mixed in here because we're a little further away from the i guess you could say old town although working with you know separate district districts is a bit weird when the city is so small but i tried to go for some different styles and i kind of like the you know the density transition uh, there's probably gonna be a lot of sweet angles to shoot some cinematics from so that's gonna be pretty fun at least as we move over to this corner of the map um, or the city it's uh, a little more focused on recreational activities we've got this small bay here with a very nice uh, park where people walk their dogs and just hang around and chill we've got the marina of course Unfortunately, no boat assets as of yet, which is a real bummer because that would have been uh, super cool, but generally pretty happy with how this corner turned out. As we move over here, uh, there's a bit of a mix of a big like recreational promenade and plaza here facing the uh, facing the ocean, uh, but mixed with some pretty high density old town developments here. And then I've squeezed in some of these high rises to kind of create a mix of the traditional and these modern steel and glass structures. Also pretty happy with how the park here at the crematorium turned out. It's a very simple setup, but uh, one thing's for sure, there's uh, plenty of opportunity to grab some street food around the city. I did a bit of detailing of the main avenue and it is of course like the real uh, heart or main arterial of the city. Uh, not too much traffic, but I mean, there are limitations to how much traffic we can expect given the footprint of the city, but I'm pretty happy with how this, this turned out. And speaking of population, if we take a little look at our statistics, we are approaching 6,000 population and about 800 doggos, which is pretty cool, nice ratio. Almost 5,000 jobs with the average wealth being wealthy. The average happiness level is only content, but I mean, it kind of makes sense because unreliable mail service and internet service are detracting here and I mean I don't really provide those so I'm surprised to have service at all. Anyways to finish up my rambling uh, I want to thank you so much for watching through to the very end of this long video and all the support of course. Uh, it has been a ton of fun to build this even though it's taken me so many hours so if you enjoyed it i would really appreciate a like and a comment as well what did you enjoy the most which area don't you like uh, or do you have any fun suggestions for what i could do next in city skylines 2. last but not least i'll throw on those cinematics and i hope to see you all in the next one goodbye